Hey Band Network Remote Teaching Series. Welcome to the Hey Band Network Remote Teaching Series. Today we have our guest from San Antonio, Texas, this is Roland Sandoval. Welcome to the Hey Band Network. Uh, it's a real honor to be here with you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let me tell everybody a little bit about uh, Mr. Sandoval. He is currently a graduate assistant at UTSA, University of Texas, San Antonio, in the Division of Music. Um, prior to that, he was a uh, band director at O'Connor High School in San Antonio area for 20 years, so 16 years run those program. Uh, fantastic band program, lots and lots and lots and lots of kids um, in that program when he was there. And then those that in the state of Texas are familiar with Roland's um, extensive work with the jazz side of things. He was an officer for TJEA for 12 years. Um, and has always been seen around the all-state jazz stuff that's happening at the state convention. And you, you say jazz around that area in San Antonio and, and Roland Sandoval usually comes up um, is around that. So this is a really big thing. So today's special part of this will be to kind of dive into how do we do remote teaching with jazz? Um, and I thought, well, what a great guest is, is to have Mr. Sandoval here today. So um, thanks for joining me. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about um, UTSA, maybe a little bit, and what you're doing there, what you're doing currently with the UTS, UTSA system. Well, it's, it's been a tremendous opportunity. Uh, um, I pursued a master's of education when I was teaching, uh, but I never pursued a, a master's of music. Uh, and so when I came to retirement time, uh, I looked for another journey and in just a general conversation, uh, with uh, the faculty members over at UTSA. Uh, it was a kind of a, uh, all the cards aligned and allowed for a dream to come true, so to speak, uh, and to complete uh, a master's degree in instrumental conducting. And so what I'm very blessed to get a chance to be is still be around students uh, and still be uh, getting an opportunity to work with uh, the college marching band uh, as, I, as, as my main role as the graduate assistant there. Um, and then also uh, be able to uh, continue my studies, but also to conduct uh, all three university bands. Uh, so in these past few uh, years, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, the Wynn Ensemble, the Symphonic Band, and uh, a big role with the university band. Very cool. And, and the university uh, music program or the band departments led by... Uh, Professor Ron Ellis is director of bands and Dr. John Zarco is director of instrumental studies uh, on campus and uh, Mike Steiner is uh, the assistant director of athletic bands. So I have fantastic role models um, to be around and just very, very blessed for this next opportunity and this next journey. And it's been, it's been uh, one that's uh, uh, very eye-opening because uh, also it, it gives me an opportunity to share the years of experience as a public school educator uh, with the next generation, which has also been very rewarding. Yeah, everybody wins on that one. So, um, so we, we, I reached out to you today, let's talk about jazz and maybe some resources and some ways um, in this crazy remote teaching situation we're all in. So um, maybe kind of go into some of the things you've seen or experienced in remote teaching and then how, how are some ways people might be able to incorporate jazz into that? Well, sure. And one of the, the one of the big challenges I think everybody has is that um, uh, many of the programs, of course, in the state actually don't have jazz as part of their in, um, in school curriculum. So they're after school programs. And as a direct result of them being after school programs, the focus and energy may not be on um, actually having an official time for that genre. Uh, in in what the school district is seeing is, hey, you got to still make sure you're doing this with your on the concert band side to meet curriculum standards and do all that. Uh, if if jazz isn't in the curriculum, well, that's even more of a challenge. Uh, and of course, if it, if you do are fortunate to have uh, jazz during the school day, then hopefully there's also a component that's going on right now where you are able to. Uh, have you know some kind of official time during the week where that's an official Zoom meeting or something like that. Uh, either way, you want to and you want to try to keep your kids right, activate, act, active, uh, and still thinking jazz, so to speak. So there are a, a lot of resources 
The first, and, and I think one that's really important, um, of course, if they're going to do the art form, is that there's a, some kind of listening component to it. And, and that's something that I think is, you know, that it was very important for me when I taught it uh, on, a, on a daily basis, was that there was always some kind of dedication to listening to uh, music of different decades, music of the particular instrument you play, you know? So great saxophonists, great trombonists, great uh, artists that are from the rhythm section, and making sure you're sharing that. And that's something, of course, that's very easy to do uh, with your kids is to, is to provide some kind of YouTube channel where you're weekly, you know, providing lists or, or suggestions for them to uh, listen to. And I think that's the first priority is that they're listening to the art form in some form or, or fashion. So you, you talked about the, the school system and some places have jazz class and some it's after school extracurricular. Um, so what if someone wants to do a little bit of jazz? I mean, our curriculums have kind of been turned upside down with no UIL in the band world. Um, are there resources, any things that maybe somebody wants to do? Hey, let's go down this route of doing a little bit of jazz to maybe introduce it to our entire program. Uh, yes. Um, and and uh, you 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 talking specifically like links or, or websites or um, anything you uh, know like to pr maybe provide our students uh, in the classroom another way to get involved. Let's say it's an oboe player, a bassoon player, just to teach them an American genre. Oh sure, absolutely, um, and and that's where um, that's something that um, is going to be. Uh, because of the opportunity we have with uh, sharing resources, like a, creating a, a YouTube channel uh, and listening uh, lists, so to speak, uh, you can open that up. Sure, and improvisation is not an art form that is also not dedicated to just the instruments of the traditional jazz setting. You know, teaching improvisation and, and creativity, you know, can transfer to every instrument, which is also a really cool thing. And so what about on the improvisation? So we're all at home, our kids are at, at their homes and, and have a way, is there a way that kids can dive into that and maybe resources that have popped up or some things they can use that'll help out since we don't see many yeah. apps? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's several apps that are out now, but uh, as a direct result, um, there's something that uh, that's also really uh, critical to understand is that the the changes so to speak of a jazz standard uh, are not necessarily uh copyrighted <laughs> right the actual chord changes of a song often are are not in that uh mode of concern uh it's when you apply the actual composition to the to the chord changes so being able to send students a resource or recording of chord changes is something that's a lot easier to do than than actually dealing with the copyright of sending them, you know, the actual tune itself. Uh, and so the, the game changer, and, and of course, is the iReal Pro uh, app. And uh, that one is um, so critical because uh, the, the gamut of how many songs are on that particular app is just amazing. I think uh, depending on what you download uh, in the form of the app, there's anywhere between 1,200 to 1,500 jazz standards on there. And the advantage is that you can change keys, you can change uh, tempos, uh, you can loop the changes as many times as you like. I mean, so it's, it, you know, what, what it is, it's a game changer for jazz education. And for those that aren't familiar with this app, um, it's iReal Pro app, correct? Yes. So it's so I, a little bit what it is. I know Harry Waters has done some stuff and used that in the background. I'm going to talk especially about two different apps today. Uh, but the app itself is, they're, they're probably some of the more expensive that are out there because they range in price. I haven't checked them lately from the, between $10 to $13. And of course, for an app, that's pretty expensive. But you got to realize, for thirteen dollars, you get a you get a uh, rhythm section that uh, never gets tired. 
<laughs> and you can hire them to play for you uh, at any hour of the day, right? And as many times as you like. So uh, just to show you, can you see that? Yeah. Is that good? All right. So here's a. Uh, I wish I had screenshot, but I, I'm I explain. I'm not, I'm using really low tech technology. So as you download, like here's a song. This is Blue Bossa, uh, and on Blue Bossa, uh, this is I can I can pick. The instrument that I'm uh, playing. So this is set up for an E flat alto saxophone, right? I can change it instantly to B flat or or treble clef, uh, and the chord changes only up here. Of course, now what you do not get is you do not get the the melody. That's when the copyright comes into play, right? But access to the chord changes is something that you can certainly uh, great get easy access to. And as I push play. Uh, You'll see that the each different measure is highlighted, so it actually traces the chords as it goes through. Okay, and then at the bottom here, I don't know if you can see that the actual scale that goes with that measure appears and changes as the chord changes. So all the scales that you're teaching your kids in the class, like Mixolydian and Dorian and things like that, all uh, appear as the student learns the tune. What a great and I can change the I can change the style on there with you know I just go in and if I wanted to do that as a as a rock tune, I could change it to a rock tune. If I wanted to change it to a uh, a New Orleans style uh, street beat, I could do that. And it's all just instantaneous and it's pretty amazing. And of course, I, like I said, I, I can slow it down, I can speed it up. I, and then if I'm a rhythm section player, I can go into the app and I can take out the drum set, for instance. And then if I'm a, if I'm a percussionist, then I can play drums minus the drums along with the other members of the rhythm section. If I'm a piano player, I can take off the piano player. If I'm a um, uh, bass player, I can take the bass part out so I can play the bass lines with the drummer and piano player. So there's all these incredible options uh, that as a uh, musician, uh, I can do. Uh, now, of course, if, not, if the students don't buy that app, uh, you can certainly still uh, you know, somehow record the changes for them, send them the changes, and then have them play along with it. Man, that's that is really cool. All the the option it has for the iReal Pro app, uh, really really cool. Is that relatively new, or has that been out for a while? No, it's been out for a while, um, and it's available both on, um, of course, uh, on the Apple and and the Android side. Uh, and you can put it on any device, right? It's it, it's the you can put it on your phones, your iPods, uh, right? Your laptops, uh, and then it also has um, uh, something that's really important to know is that when you download the app, there's there's uh, you still have to go to a forum uh, to put the songs onto the app, and then when you go to the forum, there's a it's a real clear there. It says uh, jazz standards, and that's where you'll see that there's I believe they're up to like 1,500 jazz standards that are on there. And when you download those, that forum onto your app, it puts all of the tunes in alphabetical order and you can rearrange them by composer. You can pick them up by composer. You can pick them up by title. Uh, so it's just an amazing resource uh, for your kids, especially uh, the ones that don't mind investing and putting that on their phone. And because it's a compressed app, you know, even though it has tons of information on there, it's still not going to take up huge amounts of memory on your phone. Cool. Very or cool. device. Very, very useful for any, well, anyone at any level, uh, kids or adults on that. So, um, you right. know, uh, and the game, go ahead. Uh, well, the game changer to me is the, the fact that the, it, every measure is highlighted. So it teaches the students how to, with their eyes to follow 
of the chords as they move across the page as well. So that, you know, actually having that particular app is and that on your device is, is what really makes it special. Cool. I like that. that that's uh, something to invest in on my end too. Um, you mentioned there's a second app that you wanted to kind of dig into and talk about. Right. And that's for your, your drummers. I, and this is an app called drum school. And this is also a $10 app, but this is a, this is another game changer here. I think for your drummers, it's called drum school. And so you see there, uh, when you, when you download the app and you go to it and you say, okay, uh, I'm going to, I'm looking for a rock beat for my drummer. And so there's a written out rhythm. Like this is the most basic rock beat, like for a sixth grade, right? Seventh grade drummer, right? Yeah. The part is, the part is written there, right? And it's being played. You can change tempo, but I don't know if you can see this. There's a set of hands and feet. Mm -hmm. You can actually say, okay, so what is the left foot doing? You can take out and just do just the left foot. You can do just the right hand. And then what he did on this, and if you can see this at the bottom, there's a video. So he actually, then on top of that, there's a video of him playing the part. So you can see what it looks like live. So there are over, there's like 500 different percussion rhythms on here that go from, uh, from rock uh, to uh, jazz, to uh, reggae, blues, country, fusion, New Orleans, Latin, and the Latin's broken into Brazilian, Cuban rhythms. Uh, then there's world grooves on here, um, Caribbean rhythms, beguines, cha-chas, you name it. And it's on here. So like, for instance, here I called up a Latin rhythm. And once again, it's written there, right? The rhythm is actually written out. If you can, just focus on your feet and if you don't and then you can actually want, once again watch him play it at the bottom live and there's a video of his foot there as well so this is a ten dollar app for your drummers that is just amazing especially obviously you know most of us are not able to sit down on a drum set and demonstrate uh, well especially now <laughs> But uh, but to be able to communicate to your percussionist, because that's that was always the challenge I had as a jazz teacher, especially as they became more advanced. I mean, I was always blessed to have an you know an incredible uh, percussionist on staff. But if I don't have that, and I need to try to explain what this groove is to a student, well, here it is written out. I can isolate even hands. I can isolate their two feet, and then I can show them a video, and then we could speed it up. And we can slow it down and they they can sit there and just practice that groove and get it under their belt. That's really cool. A real resourceful for anyone and especially in the, like any time, but now that we don't, like you said, we don't see the kids, how do you teach them and let them develop and grow? It looks like that app actually allows them to progress um, in terms of the level that they're asked of. And these are two fantastic resources for, for people to, to look into and use. Um, any other resources or tools that you found to be helpful at this time? Oh, sure. Um, and, you know, a couple of other uh, things that are really, I, I call the game changers in, in uh, jazz education. And this is something that, uh, that may not be a great tool right now, but when we, you guys, everybody returns in the, in the fall, <laughs> is something that I've shared with people before. It's called Jazz Deck. It's probably backwards, unfortunately, uh, on your screen. Um, but Jazz Deck is a, literally a deck of cards. And it's, uh, I feel like a magician. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's color coded, right? So all the, all, the, um, all the major seven chords are blue, right? 
all the minor chords are red. And so let's just take a real simple one here. And this is called Jazz Deck. And I had all my students buy this. Uh, and because it's, it's, I think it was on the market for like $18. I'm not, you know, and I'm promoting this probably, but nonetheless. Um, so like here's a major seven chord, right? And what you do is you turn the card around and on the card, it tells you all the good notes that sound great when you play a major seven chord in improvisation. So it not only has the chord tones, but it also has like some guide tones and it tells you where to use this chord. So how does this work? Well, like in a blues, a blues has generally right four chords in it. I would have the kids pick out the one chord, the four chord, the two chord and the five chord and this, right? So they have the chord, the four chords that are in a blues progression. They turn the card around and when it gets to that color in the progression, they would improvise using the notes they see on the card. Now this is something you can also do on your own. Uh, but this is a another really, really cool resource uh, for teaching. Uh, and that's just to show the kids the great, the cool notes, you know, that are out there. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I, that's a, another useful tool um, that someone can purchase and get and have at home and, and use when you get back together. And I, I think what's, you know, uh, it, from a remote standpoint right now um, is uh, if you if you are especially if let's let's talk more on the side of the of the people that are have a jazz class right so you yeah. you do probably need to meet with them right and you still have to want to work projects with them and that's where uh, uh being more formal with the edge on the education side this is the kinds of things i would think you would want your kids doing is to is to encourage them to invest maybe in this but if you can't provide them with you know sets of really easy changes that are not uh, an issue for you to share, right? Because uh, progressions are not copyrighted, so to speak. Uh, and if you can share those some way and send them, uh, um, you know, a recording of those changes and then have them play over them and write out the scales and do things like that. Those are the elements I think that are right now that are going to be real, that are important that you're doing. And, and then if you, if you if you just have an after school jazz program, you know you still want to be doing that, but then you you don't have the the necessarily responsibility of uh, I guess making sure you're meeting teaks and doing all that kind of stuff. You don't have that, but you want to keep jazz. That's where the listening component, right? Listen to this. Listen to uh, Gordon Goodwin. You know, listen to you know do the great, really interesting. Uh, artists that are out there right now and the kid that usually kids like like Maynard Ferguson and uh, you know all those all those great jazz artists and, but you also want them listening to the greats like uh, Duke Ellington and the Count Basie Orchestra and uh, the classic ensembles from the Big Band era you may want them listening to some bebop and Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and John Coltrane uh, so Creating a listening list is also going to be really, I think, important just to keep the kids involved. Yeah, excellent. Very good stuff. Um, anything else on the jazz side of things you want to share with our viewers today? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, something else I, that, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people are doing this, probably easier to do than a big band, is to do some kind of uh, virtual band uh, where you take a jazz standard and you do, you know, just have – you send the changes out, have everybody uh, record the head of the tune, and then designate, all right, if this is a blues, right? You get 24 uh, measures of improvisation, and you get three, you know, three uh, choruses or whatever the case may be. Send it back to me, and you compile it in some way. And yeah, to me, it's easier to do in, um, with a jazz ensemble than it is with a, uh, you know, trying to do a full concert or, or something like that. Um, but I encourage you to do that. I've seen a lot of groups, of course, starting to do the virtual band thing, at least with one piece. And that's another great way to, I think, to keep your kids active. Excellent. Very good. Anything else? Um, the only other, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention also is just to uh, continue to share um, 
basic vocabulary with your kids, you know, just like you're working probably with scales and fundamentals on the concert band side right now, and you're probably doing a lot of individual assessment, you can certainly do that with your jazz kids with the with the modes, right, uh, that are in the major scale, the Dorian and Frisian and Lydian and Mixolydian, introducing that to your kids as an assignment, uh, also um, teaching your kids how those uh, are used, doing some basic uh, chord symbols recognition, you know, write list out, right? If this is a major scale, turn the major scale into a Mixolydian scale. If this is a Mixolydian scale, turn the Mixolydian scale into a Dorian scale. So there's, there's those kinds of uh, uh, basic projects, I think, that you can do also to uh, keep your kids active and, and pretty easy assignments uh, that, that won't... Um, uh, have a huge impact on everything else that they're doing. And it all sounds pretty reasonable in terms of getting access to most of these things. So um, yeah, lots mm -hmm. of resources, lots of good ways to be creative with this that, that you've thrown out uh, with this. So, so very cool. Sure. Um, also, I mean, one of the things that we, we kind of talked about up front is uh, Mr. Sandoval is the president elect of Texas Band Masters Association. And so I know that's our summer convention that usually happens in San Antonio, and he's been involved with that at, uh, as an officer. So I don't you know if you want to share a few things with the uh, viewers uh, related to TBA and being on that, being here and, and an officer. I know you guys are, are facing this remote teaching and, and school closure and everything at this point. Right, and I just wanted to you know, be assured and that the safety and the well-being of our students uh, and our attendees and all our colleagues is the top priority of the organization. Uh, the TBA Board of Directors and staff, we are monitoring the situation daily with the city of San Antonio, the convention center, and other state and government officials. And at this time, the convention activities are, are continuing as planned. Uh, Pre-registration is ongoing and in line with previous years. And if necessary, uh, if we do have to cancel the convention, um, membership registration fees will be refunded. Uh, but we are, are, have a contingency in place uh, with a uh, virtual convention if that has to occur. Uh, and we will continue to up update that information when, if that decision comes to play uh, via email, social media, and our website. And you will hear about that in your region meetings as well from your TBA reps. And just know that TBA remains steadfast um, in our support of the wonderful Texas band directors. And we'll all get this uh, through this with challenging times by supporting each other. And like uh, this wonderful opportunity to learn uh, from you uh, in this uh, virtual learning experience that you've provided everybody here. Awesome. Thanks. And, and so that, it does that aren't familiar with the, the Texas Band Mass, it's a great organization that gives lots of support and we're on a fantastic convention, but I'm just keeping an eye out. We'll put the website uh, listing on here and you can check that stuff out and see where we head um, as, as we keep going. It seems like week by week at this point. So. Um, do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Um, well, I just want to congratulate uh, all the uh, from the list on the on the jazz side, uh, the the wonderful groups uh, in the Rio Grande Valley that were just honored by uh, earning their uh, performance opportunity in Midwest. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, don't forget also that uh, TMEA is also, uh, oh, and that's of course Vela Middle School and Harlingen High School. And we'll give a shout out to those amazing educators there. Uh, also remember that. Uh, that uh, the Texas Allstate material is still coming out. Alex Parker does such a great job with TJEA, and that's coming out May 15th. So there's another resource for your kids, uh, the high school kids, obviously, uh, to be working on. And that comes out, on, my understanding is they're going to do that on PDF. And the recordings are going to be available uh, also on mp3 so you'll be able to send that directly to your kids as a pdf file to download or to be able to at least practice with uh, so tga continues to work real hard to make sure that that process is still going to go on 
Uh, Team EA is still doing the Honor Jazz Ensemble submissions. So don't forget that's coming up. That's a May 15th deadline. Uh, and encourage that. And I also want to thank all, all the people that have been a big influence in my jazz world and their influence. They, this is too many to mention, but uh, I'm, I'm only here because of the wonderful teachers that I had or the people that have in our great state that have always put a wonderful emphasis on the art form to make sure it stays alive in Texas. So I uh, appreciate you especially uh, allowing me to, to kind of just speak a little bit toward that uh, genre. And it's, it is a big genre across the U.S. and it's, it seems like it's growing. There's more opportunities from groups in Texas. And, and I know you are one of those people that a lot of people have looked up to and reference when we start talking about who should we bring in for clinician and who does outstanding work. I know your name comes up time and time again um, as a respected. So um, it's, it's kind of an honor to have you on here and get to talk to you about this and how do we make this work in this, these interesting times and get the most out of it and throw out some great resources and you know, some of you may have found something that, hey, I haven't tried that app yet and, and run with that and make the most of it. So i um, really glad to have you on here today. I have a lot of this information that we talked about. I have it on, on files uh, uh, that I can send you. And this is what I can send you if you're interested. I can send you the, uh, a list of apps uh, specifically. I can get, uh, send you um, a list of jazz standards for beginners. Uh, that uh, are critical for uh, starting to listen to and starting to improvise. I also have a, I've compiled a list of tunes that I conducted over the last 30 years as a music educator uh, at all different skill levels that I felt were great uh, for middle school jazz ensemble and high school jazz ensemble. Uh, so I'm willing to share those as well. Uh, so just uh, on the email link that's there. Uh, just email me and let me know that you're interested in the jazz material and I'll be glad to just forward that right over to you. Awesome. Fantastic information and, and tons. This thing is packed full of, full of info. So uh, Mr. Sandoval, thank you very much for joining me on the Hey Band Network today. It's been a lot of fun to, to chat and listen to you talk about how we can improve jazz and, and keep it going while we're doing remote teaching. Awesome. Well, thank you again for having me. And, and lastly, to everybody watching that made it this far, uh, if you can click on the Hey Band Network YouTube channel, please subscribe, like this video, and you'll see other videos in our remote teaching and leadership series. Uh, thank you for joining us, and everyone have a great day.